Okay, welcome back. In this lesson, we're gonna pick right up where we left off and continue to talk about routing in Express. I have three main objectives. The first one is to show what is called the splat or star route matcher. And then I want you to write routes containing route parameters. So we'll talk about how we do that, what route parameters are. And then lastly, I wanna have a quick discussion about route order. Let's get started. I'm using the exact same first Express app that we used before. It's just a single app.js and a node modules directory with Express installed. App.js has our hi there, our by, and our slash dog routes. And we're just gonna continue to add to this in this lesson. The first of those objectives that I'll hit is introducing the splat or star route matcher. Before I show you any new code, I'm just going to start up the server. So node app.js, make sure it starts okay. Then I'm going to open up the tab where I'm actually visiting the app. And I want to show you this message first. So this happens when you're trying to access one of your applications when the server isn't running at all. But the server is running now. So if I refresh, now I get my hi there. Or if I go to slash dog, I get meow. But what I want to show is if I go to a route that doesn't exist, like slash dogs, and I hit enter, and I showed this earlier, I get a cannot get slash dogs. And that will happen for whatever route that I go to, unless it's one of the three that we've defined. Slash dog and slash by. So if we wanna have some sort of catch all, some sort of message that we respond to every other route, except for by dog and the root, we can use the star. So that looks like this. We'll do an app.get and we just get star and we proceed with everything else exactly the same. And inside of here, we'll just do a res.send, you are a star, just like that, and save. So this code will be triggered, this line here will run whenever our app gets any get request to any URL aside from these three that we've already defined. So I'll show you that now, we have to restart the server Okay, restarted it, refresh the page, nothing should change. But now if I go to some random chipperish route and I hit enter, I get you are a star. But my other routes are unchanged. If I go to slash, that still works. If I go to slash dog, that still works. But if I go to chipperish, I get you are a star. This is especially useful if you want to have some sort of error message or error web page that you show a user anytime they try and access a route that isn't defined or one that you're not expecting, you can show some sort of message or some HTML template that says page not found. Let's go back now to our editor and I'm going to try something where I'm going to copy this or cut it and move it above the other routes and just save it. So don't change anything aside from the order where now my star route, the catch all comes first. And then I'm going to restart my server, control C and then up arrow. Now I'm gonna go back and refresh the page. And this shouldn't change because this is still gibberish. So it's still hitting that catch all route and not hitting any of the other routes. But if I try and go to the root page, I still get you are a star. If I try and go to slash dog, I get you're a star. And if I try and go to slash by, I also get you're a star. So this gets at that third objective, which is I want to have a discussion about the order of routes. And that discussion boils down to this. Order of routes matters. So in this case, if I put this catch all route, the star that matches everything, if I put that first, then nothing else will be matched ever. The key concept is that the first route that matches a given request is the only route that will be run. So for one request, we'll never have this code run and then this code. If one of these callbacks is running, if it's being triggered, then we're done. So that request has then been handled and it never moves on to these other routes. But let's say, I'm gonna move this back down to where it was. Let's say that this is my code and someone makes a request to slash dog. First thing that will happen is Express is going to check if it matches this route. Was it a get request to slash? The answer is no. So then it checks this one. Was it a get request to buy? Nope. So then it checks this one. Was it a get request to slash dog? The answer is yes. So it runs this code and then it's done. It doesn't move on and check this one at the end. 
So of course, if I put this first, it's problematic because it overrides any of the other routes that we've defined, and it will just always respond with, you're a star, which although it makes for a great motivational website, it's not the behavior that we're looking for in a real web app. And the last objective that I wanna talk about, which is definitely the most important one, is something called route parameters. To help introduce route parameters, I'm going to use reddit.com and show you some of its routes. For those of you who aren't familiar with Reddit, I highly recommend that you avoid it at all costs. Don't listen to what I'm about to say. You will lose all productivity in your life. The way that it works is that people can post different posts, whether it's a link or an image or a video or just some text to different subreddits. And there are thousands and thousands of different subreddits, each one with a category. So right now I'm looking at the soccer subreddit. I could also go to the gaming one or to music or to funny or to news or movies. And each one of those has content that is related to that topic. So in this case, I'm on the soccer subreddit and notice the route reddit.com slash r slash soccer. So when I ask the server for reddit.com slash r slash soccer, it parses the route and it realizes we're looking for soccer posts, goes to the database, gets all the soccer posts and sends them to me in the response. But as I mentioned earlier, there are thousands and thousands of different subreddits. And I can assure you that Reddit is not set up like this, where there's a route for every single subreddit. It's not app.get slash r slash soccer. And I'll just shorten that. And then another one for music. And another one for movies. And so on, 10,000 plus times. That is not how Reddit works. This code is not dry at all. Remember dry stands for don't repeat yourself. In fact, it's very wet, write everything twice. Although it's more like write everything 10,000 times. So rather than define a separate route for every single subreddit, we could define a pattern. And this is what Reddit does. They have a pattern that's something like slash R slash a subreddit name. But if we just leave it like this as slash R slash subreddit name, it will only match when I go to slash r slash subreddit name, and I match it exactly the same. Before I show you how we get around that, I'm gonna go back to Reddit and click on one of the posts. So this post here, I'm gonna click on it and look at the route. So it's reddit.com slash r slash soccer slash comments slash this crazy string, it's an ID, slash the title of the post or part of the title. And when you go to this route, you get all of the comments that correspond to this post, to the post that has that title. And of course, there are millions and millions of different posts on Reddit, and they don't each have their own route defined. So there's not a route that looks like this inside of the server code. Something like this would be insane to have for every single post, especially because the posts are all created by users, and nobody who's writing the code can anticipate all of those different posts. So instead, we would want some sort of pattern where we have r slash subreddit name, in this case soccer, slash comments, slash an ID, slash title. And just like the one above where I had subreddit name, this will only match if we literally type word for word, character for character, r slash subreddit name, slash comments, slash ID, slash title. So to make it into a pattern, we make use of what are called route parameters or route variables. And in other frameworks, people call them path variables as well. They're very, very simple to implement. If I want to define a pattern where we listen for a get request to slash r slash anything else afterwards, any single subreddit name, all I have to do is put a colon right there. And that tells Express to not actually match character for character subreddit name but to make it a pattern where we're listening for slash r slash any word afterwards. So let me comment this one out for now and let's finish this up with our request and response and open it just like that. And all that I'll do is res.send welcome to a subreddit. And we'll just save that and restart our server. Now, if I want to see this message, I need to go to a route that matches this pattern. So let's go back and refresh. And if we go to slash by, we still get the same thing. If we go to the root page, we still get the same thing. But now if I go to slash r slash puppies, 
I now get a message that says welcome to a subreddit. So slash r slash puppies follows this pattern. And so does slash r slash soccer or any other subreddit that I could come up with. But it is important to note something like this wouldn't work. Slash r slash soccer slash hello. That no longer works because this is a different pattern. So it's not like a wild card where it says slash r slash anything else afterwards. What it really means is match anything that comes in with slash r slash any single thing following it. So not slash r slash subreddit name slash something else, but slash r slash soccer slash r slash puppies. And I'm saying slash r a lot and it's getting really annoying. So let's move on down here and I'll show you how we can convert this one. It looks exactly the same where we just put a colon in front of anything that we want to be a variable, anything that we want the user or the application to be able to change. So comments should always just be comments on every Reddit post. It always is the name of the subreddit, like soccer slash comments slash the ID slash the title of a post. So comments is always there. And this will now be matched. If I go to a route, let's finish this out function request response. And let's come up with a route to match this one. I got a little message here, which is really nice from cloud nine telling me that it wasn't expecting this parenthesis. That's because I wasn't calling a method. So now let's do a res.send and I'll just welcome to the comments page, just like that. And we'll save and restart the server. And now to match this route, I need to go to slash R slash a subreddit name slash comments slash an ID, anything slash a title that can be anything as well. And let's do that now. We'll go to slash R slash soccer slash comments slash any ID. We'll do one, two, three, but it doesn't have to be numbers. It could be a word. It doesn't matter at all. And then slash a title like my first soccer game. And if we hit enter, we now get welcome to the comments page. But of course I can change this and make it some random string and then another title that's a random string or just numbers. And I still match that pattern. So it's not checking for the fact that something is letters or words or has underscores or that it's at least 10 characters. It doesn't care. There are ways of doing that, but all that this cares about is a pattern of chunks of text followed by and divided by slashes. The last and most important thing is how we access this data out inside of our route handler. So if I wanted to send a message here that was, you know, welcome to the soccer subreddit when the user goes to slash r slash soccer, but I want it to change to welcome to the puppies subreddit when they go to r slash puppies, I need a way to access that out. I need to know what was the value of subreddit name. And Express gives us a nice and easy way to do that. Inside of this request object, so far we've only been working with the response, res.send, but the request object contains all the information about the incoming request. Let's just do a simple console.log request, and we probably won't actually be able to see all that much because there's so much there that it will only print out a small subset of it. But let's just try and restart the server and hit this route, so r slash subreddit name do soccer. And here you can see it actually does print the whole thing out. And so there's a lot of information coming from that request that's all being printed out here. And what I'm looking for is something called request.params, which should be, there we go, right here. It's an object that contains all of the route parameters and their corresponding values. So in this case, subreddit name is equal to soccer because I went to slash r slash soccer. So what we can do is let's do console.log request.params rather than the entire thing and save and then refresh or restart the server. And now if I go to slash r slash hello, it will say that subreddit name is hello. And I can do the same thing for puppies. And there we go. And let me show you the same thing when we have multiple path parameters like we do here. So I'll just put that right there, save, restart the server again, and then we'll trigger this route by going to r slash puppies slash comments slash an ID slash a title. My corgi is cute and hit enter. 
and we get welcome to the comments page. And if I look in the terminal, I'll see that we have three different route parameters, three different params, subreddit name is puppies, ID is 1234, and title is my corgi is cute. To wrap this up, when we respond with welcome to a subreddit, let's actually make it welcome to the puppy subreddit, welcome to the whatever subreddit. And to make it a little bit more fun, let's make sure it's all uppercase. So what we'll do is make a variable var, and we'll call it subreddit equals request.params dot subreddit name it has to match exactly what we called it here. Remember, it's just inside of this request.params object. Rather than just responding with welcome to a subreddit, we'll do welcome to the space plus subreddit plus subreddit. So that will be welcome to the puppies subreddit, and it won't be uppercased. So to make that uppercase, we can use dot to uppercase, and we can do that here, or we could do it right here on subreddit. And I'll get rid of that semicolon and save and restart the server. Let's go back and trigger that route again. So this one won't trigger it. This is for the route that has multiple params. We just want r slash puppies, and I get welcome to the puppy subreddit. Now if I do r slash puppies or r slash dogs, all grown up, or cats, and I now have a dynamic web page. All right, so let's wrap this up really quickly. We'll go back. So when we use the star inside of a route definition, it will match anything that comes in at all. And along with that, the order that we define the routes matters. So if we put the star route matcher up top, no other routes will run below it. But if we put it at the bottom, which is where it normally goes, it will behave as a catch-all, sort of as an else statement. If no other route is matched, otherwise match the star. Lastly, we talked about route parameters, which we can use to define a pattern in a route that doesn't have to be matched word for word or character for character. It just has to be matched in the same pattern. So something like this, where I can have slash r slash any subreddit name after it. All right, so that's it. So in the next video, we're gonna do another exercise. And this time you'll be writing your own Express app from scratch and you'll be using route params in some of your routes.